Call the February 13, 2012 Council meeting to order. If you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would the clerk please call the roll? Colasar? Here. Lamb? Here. Rose? Here. Shields? Here. Simpson? For Delaware? Here. Coin? Here. Reading of the minutes? I move that the minutes of the regular meeting of January 23rd, 2012, as submitted by the clerk, be approved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll? Lamb? Yes. Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. Burdell Ware? Yes. Coyne? Yes. Colasar? Yes. Motion passes 6 0. Reports of standing committees. The Finance Committee, we previously had a Finance Committee prior to this meeting, and it was a lengthy one. Uh, hopefully, we don't have two hour finance meetings in the future, but uh, it seems like we have some good discussion. Uh, which we appreciate. The next finance meeting is two weeks from today, uh, probably at 5.30 uh, downstairs. Health, Safety, and Sanitation Committee, Mr. Rose. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, no report this evening. Thank you. Public Properties Committee, Mr. Shields. Thank you, Madam, Mr. President. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no report this evening on public properties. You're the uh, first one. Thank you, Mr. Shields. Special Legislation Committee, Mrs. Burdell Ware. Thank you, Mr. President. No report this evening. Streets and Sidewalk Committee, Mr. Simpson, he's not here. Uh, but there is a Streets and Sidewalk Committee scheduled 23rd. on February 23rd at 530. Correct. Uh, Water and Utilities Committee, Mr. Colzar. Thank you, Mr. President. We have a Water and Utilities meeting scheduled that same day, the 23rd, which is a Thursday at 630. And we're going to talk about the utility rate reviews recommendation on water rates. Thank you, Mr. Colzar. Request for council action for the Finance Committee. We have 1221, All Hazard and Flood Mitigation Plan Update with Jeff Harriman. 1223, Satisfaction of Lean for 1010 Oak Street, Fiscal Year 04 for the CHIP Grant. 1224, Budget Amendments. 1225, Advanced Request for Vernon Municipal Airport. Addendum to 1211, Police Reorganization. 1226, Collaboration with Schools, a Grant Study. 1227, Medina Municipal Airport, Runway Rehabilitation. 1228, Design and Plan Preparation for the Mellet Park Improvements. 1229, Accepting Friends of the Cemetery Donation for the Mausoleum. 1230, Purchase of a Stump Grinder for Forestry. 1231, Utilizing Medina Township Ball Fields. 1232, Bids Lake Road Reconstruction Phase 1. 1233, Bids for Parkview Drive Culvert Replacement. 1234, Final resolution for ODOT 212 Irvin Paving State Route 3, 1235 Easement Parkview Drive Culvert Replacement Project, and 1236 Utility Rate Review Commission Recommendations. One item for Streets and Sidewalk Committee, it's 1222 Sidewalk Construction, Maintenance, and Repair. Reports from Municipal Officers, Mayor Hanwell. Thank you, President Coyne. The, uh, this coming weekend is the annual ICE Festival on Medina Public Square. Um, it's going to be February 17th, 18th, and 19th, with uh, President's Day being Monday. Information on the event is available at the Main Street website, which is www.mainstreetmedina.com. On uh, Saturday, April 21st, uh, some local church leaders in Medina are hosting uh, what's, what's being called a big day of serving. Uh, this is a national event where they uh, put together groups uh, for different um, cities and Medina was selected this year as, as one of those uh, cities to bring volunteers here. Um, they, uh, they do anything, any community service activities from park cleanups, minor home repairs, exterior painting, yard work, uh, etc. for elderly, disabled, or those unable to do so. Um, anybody that's interested in having work performed can contact uh, Dawn Conwell at my office here, 722-9020. Her email is dconwell at medinoh.org. Or if you're interested in volunteering to serve, you can also go to the website, www.bigdayofserving.com. 
and uh, Last, the, uh, I'm serving on a committee to plan the National Day of Prayer events for this year. Uh, that takes place on Thursday, May 3rd. There'll be three events again, a uh, mayor's prayer breakfast at Williams on the Lake from 7 a.m. to 8.30. The guest speaker will be Medina County Commissioner Adam Friedrich, a noon prayer service on the square and an evening prayer service at the new Heartland Community Church at 3400 Weymouth Road. That starts at 7 p.m., usually lasts an hour to an uh, hour and a half more details as we get closer thank you thank you mayor mr durham director of finance thank you mr president i have uh, an announcement to make sure that all residents are aware of of filing a uh, city income tax return we have some opportunities if uh, any residents would like assistance with the with the forms those opportunities are saturday march 3rd uh, from nine to four tuesday march 13th from nine to four wednesday april 4th from one to eight and Saturday, April 14th, that's the last Saturday before the filing deadline from 9 until 4. All of those will be at the uh, Recreation Center on Weymouth Road. I'd like to thank Mike Wright and the Recreation Center for hosting that. We have that available if, if anybody needs help with the forms. If you need the forms, we have those here in the Finance Office. And those dates and times should be up on the screen. Or if you need that, that's come with the water bills. Or we have an additional forms at uh, City Hall. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Durham. Mr. Huber, Law Director. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report. Thank you. Uh, Chief Baraducci, Police Chief. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Wright, Economic Development Director. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> Just wanted to give Council an update. As you know, we had hired uh, Nick Arbel for our Economic Development part-time intern, and he's been working on conducting research, collecting data, and preparing an inventory list of vacant <coughs> properties and buildings in our industrial, commercial, and retail districts. He's been making a lot of progress, um, and he is now integrating the sites into the Jobs Ohio information and dat database at the state. And over the past couple of weeks, we've seen an uptick in the amount of leads that are coming um, from the state for projects, and we've been able to submit on three of those projects. And um, what's interesting, when these come in, there's a very short turnaround time, and there's usually a lot of information that they need. So by having this information that he's pulled together, we've been able to respond pretty quickly and at least get our name in the hat. So just wanted to give you an update with that. Thank you. Thank you. Chief Painter, Fire Chief. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'd like to take a moment, uh, as I do several times a year, to remind the residents to make sure they have working smoke detectors. But I'd like them to go one step further and actually take it down and take a look at the date. Uh, the latest studies have shown that uh, they're only reliable for about 10 years, and after that, the, the serviceability drops dramatically, and they probably won't function by the 11th or 12th year. Um, if they have any questions or need help getting up to take a look at that, um, have them call the station. We have batteries for them also. But uh, if they need uh, questions answered, uh, they can call Fire Station 1 at 330-725-1772. Thank you. Mr. Wright, Recreation Center Director. Thank you, Mr. President. Our uh, next scheduled advisory board meeting is this Thursday, February 16th at the Rec Center at 7.30 in the morning. Uh, now I'd like to take a, a minute to talk about the Rec Center. Um, it always amazes me every time I'm given a tour of the Rec Center and a member states that they'd never been in the facility before. Um, I can honestly say I can't remember the last time during one of those tours that uh, the, the member, or the I'm sorry, the patron didn't say something to the effect of, wow, this place is amazing. Um, it really gives me a sense of pride to know how really great the facility is and how it adds to the quality of life uh, of our community members. We offer all kinds of programs for every type of personality. Uh, currently, Medina TV is in the process of showcasing our facility and some of these programs on the city's YouTube site. Uh, recently added is a great video of our aquatics manager, Darlene Duncan, talking about some of the aquatic classes we offer. Um, if you have not seen our community recreation center before, please come in for a tour or go to our new YouTube site and check out our check out our videos. I think you'll be amazed at what we have to offer. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Vogel, a building official. Thank you, Mr. President. It's become important in recent years for businesses to possess a valid certificate of occupancy for the buildings they use for insurance, financing, and licensing purposes, just to name a few. Because many of the property owners here in Medina are not in possession of a certificate of occupancy for their buildings, the new business owner runs into an immediate stumbling block. Luckily, the Medina City Building Department can help. The Ohio Building Code allows the building official to issue certificates of occupancy to existing buildings if the owner requests one in writing. 
If I find that the use of the building has previously existed and there are no pending violations or safety hazards, I can issue a valid certificate of occupancy for any structure in the city of Medina. I team up with the Medina Planning and Fire Departments in this endeavor so that businesses can be assured that, they, that the use they propose is sanctioned by all interested parties. To start the process, a new business owner should submit an application that we will provide. A letter of intent and a simple floor plan sketch with the main use areas labeled will also be required. Once the zoning use is approved, I conduct an inspection with the fire marshal to establish that no serious hazards are present. If no serious hazards are present, I issue a valid certificate of occupancy for the building to complete the process. Any and all businesses in Medina, new or old, should possess a valid certificate of occupancy for the building they inhabit. Please stop in and we can assist you in obtaining one. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Patton, City Engineer. Thank you, Mr. President. An update on a couple of recently uh, awarded projects. Um, our traffic signal improvements, which will provide connectivity between the city's traffic signal system and the railroad's uh, warning devices. Uh, that project has been awarded and uh, contracts are currently being signed. Uh, that will provide the connectivity between uh, the two systems at three different crossings that are adjacent to signalized intersections. When completed, uh, this will allow us to finally put the signal at uh, Huntington and Smith uh, into full operation. Uh, also last week we accepted bids uh, for the water main project for, on East Smith and Smoke Rise. Uh, the, we're reviewing the bids now. The, the, the low bidder was uh, well within the project estimate. I looked to award that project and have it completed by uh, the middle of June. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Piccoli, Service Director. Thank you, Mr. President. Regardless of this past weekend's snowfall, the city street budget is doing very well. Looking at our records and comparing uh, to previous years, the overtime for street employees is almost three times less than it's been in the uh, previous three winters. Uh, with respect to salt, we have not quite used a third of what we've uh, ap applied in the previous winters as well. Um, we're not out of the woods yet. However, there is light at the end of the tunnel six weeks maybe hopefully um, secondly I'd like to acknowledge and take this opportunity to thank local business Chuck's customs and trailer sales on West Smith Road specifically John Kronick the manager for working with Marty Warkola from Myers products for their donation to the city of Medina uh, for the senior snowplow program uh, the donation has a value of five thousand two hundred and thirty three dollars and this value includes parts accessories and installation of the same it was a snowplow that was uh, donated and installed in one of our city pickup trucks um, it's very nice to see the uh, businesses getting involved with our community programs. Um, also, this uh, afternoon, BOC Board of Control formally voted to accept this donation. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Swanson, Park and Recreation Director. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report this evening. Thank you. Notices, communications, and petitions. We have two of them this evening. Confirmation of mayoral appointment to Historic Preservation Board. Lyle Morris, a property owner, expires 12-31-15. Move to approve the mayoral appointment. Second. Any discussion? The clerk please call the roll. Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. Redelware? Yes. Coyne? Yes. Colasar? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Motion passes 6-0. Confirmation of council's appointments. We have two for the audit committee. Brian Haar, a county representative ex for a term expiring 12-31-15. And Bert Humpel, the business representative for a term expiring 12-31-15. Move to approve council appointments. Second. Any discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll. Shields? Yes. Burdellware? Yes. Coyne? Yes. Colasar? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Rose? Yes. Motion passes 6-0. Unfinished business. Uh, we have none. Uh, introduction of visitors. Members of the public will be permitted the opportunity to speak on any issue or concern which pertains to the city during the portion of the council agenda devoted to introduction of visitors. All comments shall be directed to the chair and a reasonable time limit of approximately five minutes will be imposed. If there is a group, please appoint a spokesperson. Speakers should approach the right front, front microphone and state their name and address so that it can be entered into the minutes. Members of the public will be afforded the opportunity to comment on other portions of the meeting as determined by the chair or a voted majority of council members present. Is there anybody that wishes to address council? Okay. Introduction and consideration of ordinances and resolutions. Ordinance 18-12, an ordinance authorizing the finance director to make certain fund advances. Move to approve. Second. Discussion, Mr. Durham. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I need to ask for an amendment on this. 
If you look at Ordinance 24-12, where we're approving the bids for this project, it's $48,000. And also on Ordinance 26-12, where we're approving the ordinance, approving the appropriation, it's $48,000. But on the uh, advance, it was 40, and I, I think that's just a typo that got in there. So if we can change that to 48, and then to explain that, I know council's aware, but for, for people who might not be, an advance is where we loan money from one of our funds to another, so it's essentially an internal loan. And this will cover the cost of this uh, additions in order for us to be able to sell jet fuel at the airport, which uh, we're hoping to recover through uh, additional revenues, as, as Mr. Huber explained at the finance meeting downstairs. So then we'll repay it when the, once those revenues start to come in. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President. Yes, Mr. Shields. I move to amend ordinance 1812, as noted by Mr. Durham. Second. Any further discussion on the amendment? Will the clerk please call the roll on the amendment? Coyne? Yes. Colasar? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. Burdellware? Yes. Motion passes, 760. Any further discussion on the ordinance? Will the clerk please call the roll on the ordinance? Burdellware? Yes. Coyne? Yes. Colasar? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. Ordinance 18-12 passes, 6-0. Ordinance 19-12, an ordinance authorizing the expenditure of $9,000 to Madonna County Society for the Preservation of Cruelty to Animals, the SPCA, for animal-related services. Move to approve. Uh, second, but it looks like there's a correction needed on this, too. I see that, too. Mm -hmm. Well, Mayor, can you explain a little bit, and then we'll do an amendment? Yes. The um, request is for an expenditure to um, for the city to contract with the Medina County SPCA for um, assistance with uh, nuisance animals, injured animals, um, animals at large. Um, as council is aware, the public may not be, but we, we do not have an animal control officer here in the uh, city of Medina. The police officers work to uh, pick up some strays uh, to take them out to the dog pound, but um, whereas most cities have an animal control officer, we, we don't. So um, the expenditure is cheaper for us to contract these services with the SPCA and uh, they've provided these services uh, for a substantial period of time and we have a good working relationship with them. Thank you. Mr. President. Mr. Shields. I move that we amend Ordinance 1912 by modifying Section 1 to read 9,000 instead of 9,500. Second on modification. Any discussion on a modification? Clerk, please call the roll on the amendment. Colasar? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. Burdellware? Yes. Coin? Yes. <clears throat> Motion passes 6-0. Any further discussion on the ordinance? I would just like to add to, to what Mayor Hanwell said, that the SPCA has for years provided a significant service to the city at a very reasonable rate, an important service. and. And we didn't give them quite as much as they asked for, but it was quite a bit more than we have given them um, typically. And I have noticed f in the last week a number of organizations that are making an effort to collect money to help to provide funds to the SPCA aside from whatever they get from, from uh, the government. And I, I think that's great because they do provide a, a, a real service, not only to us and the community, but really to the animals, too, that they, that they help. Thank you. Any further discussion? Would the clerk please call the roll on the ordinance? Coin? Yes. Colasar? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. Redelware? Yes. Ordinance 19-12 passes 6-0. Ordinance 20-12, an ordinance amending sections 3102B5, 3105, and 3107 of the Salaries and Benefits Code of the City of Medan, Ohio, relative to the Municipal Court Part-Time Building Custodian. Move to approve. Second. Mr. President. Mr. Shields. I see the emergency clause has been requested, and I move to add that at this time. Second, adding the emergency clause. Any discussion on the emergency clause, Mr. Uh, Ma Mayor? Thank you. Uh, there's no one here on behalf of the court, but I can explain for the uh, public's benefit. Um, they have a full-time custodian at the court. Uh, the full-time custodian has some medical issues that uh, does not permit them to work for 
um, what what they perceive to be an extended period of time, but yet their needs for a custodian remain uh, while that person is out being treated. Uh, therefore, they're requesting a part-time building custodian to uh, fill in that vacancy and will only fill the part-time position when the full-time person is not available. And the reason they need the emergency clause is um, this presented itself to the court several weeks ago and um, they've had to backfill this position and, and need this approved as soon as possible. Thank you. And it's my understanding that the carry forward funds will be used to fund this position during the period of time in which the full-time custodian is, is vacant and the court has ample carry forward funds to cover this cost. That's my understanding as well, yes, sir. Thank you. Any more discussion, further discussion on the emergency clause? Will the clerk please call the roll on the emergency clause? Lamb. Lamb? Yes. Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. For Delaware? Yes. Coin? Yes. Colasar? Yes. Motion passes 6 0. Any further discussion on the ordinance? <coughs> Will the clerk please call the roll on the ordinance? Colasar? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. For Delaware? Yes. Coin? Yes. Ordinance 20 12 passes 6 0. Ordinance 21 12 and ordinance amending ordinance number 20107 passed December 10th, 2007, a subscription agreement with Medina uh, Municipal Software Corporation for permit software for the planning department and gen engineering departments. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? Mayor? Thank you, Mr. President. This um, is the software that's used by planning, building, and engineering for uh, the permits, for inspections. Um, the ordinance uh, is for $10,800, which was passed at Board of Control contingent upon council's authorization. The reason it's before council is because the agreement had to be modified. There were some provisions in there that had been in there in the previous agreements, but, but came to light uh, when, when we were looking to renew the contract. They've agreed to modify that agreement to, um, to remove or, or modify the conditions that the law department requested, and, and that's why it's back before council. Thank you. Any further discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll on the ordinance? Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. Burdellware? Yes. Coin? Yes. Polisar? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Ordinance 21-12 passes 6-0. Ordinance 22-12, an ordinance amending ordinance number 63-11 passed May 9, 2011, relative to the design and construction of an addition to the city services garage located at 781 West Smith Road. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Piccoli? Okay, Mr. Patton? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this says it uh, reads in the title, is re related to the uh, construction of the addition uh, to the mechanics bay at the service garage as well as the new facility to house uh, the street department equipment. Uh, the contract as passed by council is for $780,000. Uh, we had uh, the final construction cost is uh, $839,128. Uh, the difference is due mainly to uh, a couple of uh, items. First, uh, uh, water line extension. Uh, we ex extended a six inch water line uh, back to within a couple hundred feet of the property in order to accommodate a hydrant. Um, we did uh, structural improvements to the existing building as well as uh, uh, adding a uh, to the new mechanics bay, uh, some, some crane rails in anticipation of a future uh, crane for that area. Uh, there are also fees for um, sanitary and water connections that uh, initially the city had hoped to use city forces to complete, but due to time commitments and, and uh, other commitments at that time of year, uh, the contractor had to complete because the uh, city for, weren't available. Thank you. Uh, just as an update, the City Council had the opportunity to take a tour of the new addition to the City Garage and the new building uh, that houses all of the uh, street uh, material, the, sheet, uh, the leaf vacs, and also the plow trucks. Uh, we had an opportunity to see that we do have a wash bay within the garage that after every time the salt trucks are out salting our roads, they come back. Uh, they wash the salt off the trucks to try to increase the useful life of those vehicles for another year or two uh, by removing the salt from those vehicles. 
Uh, it turned out to be a great project. It seems like we, we accomplished our goal with respect to having the vehicles come inside rather than keeping some of the vehicles outside year-round, which the weather just is, adds additional wear and tear on those vehicles, and it was becoming more costly for the city to try to maintain those vehicles over time uh, instead of just spending the money up front and getting those vehicles under roof for the winter season. It also saves time in the winter season because the vehicles have radiant heat where the vehicles are warm when the operators come in to take them out on the road. They don't have to worry about trying to heat them up prior to uh, going out on the road and, and trying to remove all the snow on some of the packer vehicles that are left outside. So we appreciate the administration's help in accomplishing this uh, goal that I think we all had on council uh, to help improve the uh, useful life of our vehicles in the street department and in the sanitation department. Uh, any, any additional comments by council? Will the clerk please call the roll in the ordinance? Shields? Yes. Rodelware? Yes. Coyne? Yes. Colasar? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Rose? Yes. Ordinance 22-12 passes 6-0. Resolution 23-12, a resolution supporting the Ohio Department of Transportation, ODOTS, requests to move the urban paving of State Route 18 and State Route 57 project to fiscal year 2013. Move to approve. Second. Mr. Patton. Thank you. Uh, currently, ODOT has on schedule the repaving of 18 and 57 all the way through town uh, for their fiscal year 2014. We were contacted uh, by them a couple weeks ago to ask if there's any uh, desire in the city to move that project forward one year to fiscal year 2013. Um, we submitted it to council. We, we would like to support that because we think the resurfacing, the sooner the better. Uh, there is a cost commitment. The city, uh, per state law, is responsible for 20% of the cost of construction. Uh, ODOT's current estimates would put the city's share of those costs at a little over $565,000. Uh, this was planned for our, our 2014 budget, uh, but with um, some savings we've had in, in uh, a lot of our projects, uh, favorable bid prices, uh, that money will be available in 2013, so there shouldn't be any, any stress or any project that would have to be moved out to accommodate that. Thank you. Any further discussion? Will the clerk please call the rule on a resolution? For Delaware? Yes. Coyne? Yes. Colasar? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. Resolution 23-12 passes 6-0. Ordinance 24-12 and an ordinance authorizing the mayor to advertise for competitive bids and to award a contract to the successful bidder for the extension of the water and sanitary sewer services to the proposed new facility at the Madonna Municipal Airport. Move to approve. Second. Discussion? Mr. Patton? Thank you. Uh, as noted in the title, uh, this will be to extend water and sanitary sewer uh, to the new uh, facility, the modular units that are going to be installed uh, to support the uh, crews and staff uh, related to the helicopter, uh, medical helicopter company. Thank you. Any further discussion on the ordinance? Will the clerk please call the roll on the ordinance? Coin? Yes. Colasar? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. For Delaware? Yes. Ordinance 24-12 passes 6-0. Ordinance 25-12, an ordinance repealing ordinance number 9-12 passed January 23, 2012, relative to a memorandum of understanding to provide fixed route public transportation services within the city of Medina for a period of January 1, 2012 through December 31, 2012. Move to approve. Second. Mayor? Thank you, Mr. Mr. President. Um, this ordinance, well, Ordinance 912 was passed at the last council meeting, January 23rd, and when, uh, when the agreement to, this provides public uh, transit, the city share of public transit. Um, when that authorization was taken to uh, finance, the deputy finance director um, noticed that they had billed us for that um, in July of last year, and we passed an ordinance and paid that. Um, so uh, she astutely noted that we'd already paid for the January 1st, 2012 to December 2012 um, time period, and um, we're repealing that ordinance with this ordinance so as not to duplicate the payment. Thank you. Any further discussion on the ordinance? Will the clerk please call the roll on the ordinance. Colasar? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. For Delaware? Yes. Coin? Yes. Ordinance 25-12 passes 
Ordinance 26-12, an ordinance amending ordinance number 172-11, passed December 12, 2011. Amendments to the 2012 budget. Move to approve. Second. Discussion, Mr. Durham. Thank you, Mr. President. The first one is to use some of the electrical aggregation funds for an economic development project. The second one is to handle the pass-through of the JED income tax dollars to the JED. And then the next two are the previously discussed airport improvement. The last three are all transfers. Thank you. Any further discussion on the ordinance? The clerk, please call the roll on the ordinance. Lamb? Yes. Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. Verdelware? <clears throat> yes. Coyne? Yes. Colasar? Yes. Ordinance 26-12 passes 6-0. Council comments, I have a few. Uh, I just wanted to give you an update. The this prior Monday we had a first council of the whole ward meeting. It was in Ward 1 at Fire Station Number 1 on Reagan Parkway. Uh, we had some participants. I think we need to advertise a little better to get uh, the word out uh, to the other residents in the different wards when we go visit those wards. But I'll, I'll transfer it over to uh, Ms. Burdell Ware to give an update since she's the Ward 1 Council Representative. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just to touch base, kind of let you all know what happened at our meeting. We probably had a lot more administration than we actually had uh, Ward 1 residents, but it was nice to see the people who came out. Um, it was a good opportunity to interact with everyone uh, and not be on camera and things like that, just be able to talk to everyone one-on-one. -on -one. We did get a lot of participation from the people who did show. Uh, there was some comments about some uh, wanting some sidewalks in some certain areas, the light, ch the light changes that have gone into effect, uh, things like that. I spent the majority of, of my portion of the meeting discussing the improvements that have been made to my ward specifically. Um, from year 2006 to 2011, the projects completed or under construction totaled um, approximately $5.4 million. Um, so while you may not see, may not notice each uh, project that's going on, our ward is getting quite a bit of attention and will continue to do so. Um, one part, the next part of the meeting rather, talked about um, budget estimates for future Ward 1 projects. Um, those were over $11 million. Those include the pavement that's, that's coming up in the industrial um, section of our ward. Um, but many of those things were for amenities within our community. We have a splash pad coming up. We have <coughs> Um, AD, additional ADA curb ramps coming in. Um, there's annual street repairs, water line replacement, <coughs> many things that go unnoticed, but they're all being funneled into our ward for us to enjoy. Um, in addition to that, we specifically discussed some of the improvements and amenities that have either been constructed or are in the process of being constructed in Ray Mallard Park, which of course is in our ward. Um, we had the basketball court was resealed and dedicated. Uh, we had new playground equipment, equipment put in our park. Um, we had some fencing replaced within our park. We will be getting the splash pad in our park. We're, a lot of these things are being funded by grant dollars, which are specifically dedicated to our ward based on <clears throat> certain financial eligibility requirements. But administration, I know I worked with Sandy Davis, who put in an inordinate amount of time and effort to get us funds to the exclusion of the rest of the city, so to speak, based upon the people within our specific ward. And, you know, we were, um, we funded the battered w women's shelter. There was some monies put there. We do the public uh, transportation, the busing system. We put a significant amount of money there annually. We did chairs at the Senior Center, which is in our ward. Uh, there are a number of things that, that we get to the exclusion of the rest of the wards of the city based upon the, the people in our ward. So um, to the extent we continue to uh, get the, the grant dollars, um, and they are specifically for Ward 1, if we're having meetings on those, make your best effort to attend. We have held meetings in the past specifically um, d designed to talk about how we're going to spend those monies in our community, in our just our little ward section. So come because your your voice makes a difference there. Everyone that comes to those meetings is heard. We vote on those things. This is definitely your opportunity to get what you need, get what you think our city needs. Uh, lastly, for anyone who's not aware, 
I announced at my ward meeting within our specific ward that I will unfortunately be resigning from council based upon residency requirements. Um, as many of you may know, I was approximately nine months pregnant when I ran for this term, and unfortunately our fourth child has, ju we just need more room and we need it quickly. We did not anticipate the, how much more room we would need with that fourth kid and, and just the four bedroom house. Um, so unfortunately I will be moving to Valley City. It's kind of bittersweet for me. Uh, obviously I will have considerably more land and a bigger home, but also I will be leaving the community that I do love. I, I still get to remain here to some degree. Uh, my office is on the square, so I'll be here darn near every day of the week. I just won't be able to be the ward uh, council person. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bedell. We're, we're going to miss you, but not to hurry things up, but there is a vacancy on council, and applications <laughs> are due by March 15th uh, for the Ward 1 uh, seat. And you can either... Uh, go to the clerk's office to get an application or go to our website, which is www.medinaoh.org. Uh, so uh, not to rush things along, but to give the opportunity of your uh, members in your ward the opportunity to come and fill an application if you're interested in applying for the position uh, to serve on council. Council will, uh, after the applications are in, review them. Uh, we'll schedule a meeting date of which we'll give an opportunity to everybody to interview, and we'll review those interviews and select a successor. Uh, to Ward 1. Uh, the, two other comments before I open it up. On February 21st, uh, next week uh, at 5.30, we're going to have a joint meeting with our Planning Commission here at City Hall. If you'd like to attend for that, there would be Council and the Planning Commission to go over items of what the Planning Commission is doing and just to get an update between Planning Commission and Council. The next Ward meeting, which is Ward 2, will be held at 7 p.m. on March 5th. 2012 at the Recreation Center in Room A. So for the Ward 2 residents listening, you have an opportunity to come and talk to your members of council and express your concerns. Are there any additional comments for council? I'd like to add to what, what Andrew said. I think, um, and, and to compliment council and really the administration too for the meeting, the neighborhood meeting that was held at the fire station. And, and, it, and it really has t you know, such a, a two purposes. One is it really benefits us and the second one, it is an opportunity for residents to come and be in a relaxed atmosphere and chat with people, both the administration and council people, about what is um, an issue or what is interesting or questions that, that those folks might have. And whether there is one person there or five people there, I think the fact that council took this initiative uh, speaks uh, clearly to their interest in what the community has, uh, has to say, what the community thinks. In, um, in the past two months, almost the end of this month, I'll, I'll, I've already held seven uh, meetings with residents in every ward, in the, and I have a meeting on the 28th at the library with Ward 4, and that will be eight meetings in two months. And it is interesting to hear from people on a, in a relaxed way, in a comfortable way, in just a discussion of what concerns they have or what they're interested in or what they would like to see taken care of. Um, in their neighborhood. In the last meeting I had in Ward 1, which I had on Thursday, I had 15 people come. And at one meeting that I had earlier, I had one person come. And my sense is, is whether it's one person or 15 or, or 20, to give an hour to a ward or, or two hours a month is, is probably not too much to ask for the information that, that we can get back. And particularly in Ward 1, I'd like to compliment Reverend Carter because I know that the people turn up in Ward 1 for my ward meetings because he's a great promoter and um, he turns people out. And I, I appreciate him doing that because that way we can get more information and help have an opportunity to help more people. And lastly, it isn't really me that's doing much. Um, and I don't think even in the meetings that we had, it really is, is simply a conduit that comes back to the administration. And I have heard nothing but high praise um, for the conduct of this administration and for the work that they do and the professionalism uh, and the fact that this, admi this administration, City Hall, has an open door policy. People are welcome here. And when there is an issue, uh, the issue is heard. And in the experience, short experience I've had on council, the issue has been taken care of. And um, I compliment the administration on that. That's, um, that's high praise. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lamb. Any further council comments? Mr. President. Mr. Shields. I'd like to make a motion that council go into executive session for the purposes of pending litigation and land acquisition. Second. 
Any discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Bradelwear. Yes. Coin. Yes. Colasar. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Motion passes 6 0. We will not be returning after the executive session. So meeting adjourned. No, I thought it. No, I thought it.